Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. In this uh, video, I'm going to get into a two aquariums from Tom and Janice. They sent me. And then I'm also going to get into some questions that were asked to me that I think would be important that we all hear the answers to. And that's all coming up next in this video. Okay, so in this video, um, I was sent an email by a guy named Gus, and Gus says, he's, he makes a statement in his email, as per my experience in the hobby with under gravel plates, with a bubbler causing the water to go down through the substrate, then under the plates, mum sits there, which takes a while to become an issue on an aquarium, and this depends on the amount of water in the system and the amount of waste being produced. This, this, uh, what he says here, Gus, as he tells me this, what he is saying is years ago, and I'm talking back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, when under gravel filters changed, especially in the 70s, and water was being pumped through more than 30 or 40 gallons an hour. They'd start going up to 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 150, 400, 450 gallons an hour, pumping water through an under gravel filter plate. They became not only biological filters, but they became mechanical filters. And when they became mechanical filters, it was pulling the dirt in through the plates because of how fast the water was flowing through the plates. This became a problem which a lot of hobbyists realized. And instead of fixing the problem, they just went ahead and, and solved the problem by saying, no more under gravel plates. We know different now that you do not need to run an, your under gravel filter or a plenum, which basically an under gravel filter creates a plenum, the void underneath the plates, that fast. It never had to be that fast. Uh, this was something that was added by manufacturers to sell a different product or more products. So. As I wrote, Gus, I said, do an experiment. You can take two tanks, let's say five gallon, 10 gallon, whatever, with glass bottoms. And I said, run a slow moving plenum in one. And in the other one, just put the substrate at the bottom of the aquarium. Okay. Slow moving plenum. Make sure the depth is the same. So if you have a substrate and it's at least three inches, Make sure both aquariums have three inches, three inches over the plenum, three inches that you just pour your substrate on the bottom of the aquarium. Then you get yourself, let's say, uh, this is just an example. Let's say you get uh, 10 tiger bars for each tank and you put them in. You measure out your food for each tank and you feed each tank. If a tiger bar would die, you get a replacement. You always keep it at the same amount of fish. Easy experiment. Then after a year, take a look at the tanks. See if the tank with the slow moving plenum has all kinds of dirt at the bottom of the plenum. Then look at the tank with the substrate. See if there's dirt at the bottom of the substrate, if it has migrated through the substrate. Now, you can use a aquarium vac to vac out both aquariums. You're going to find out that the tank with the plenum is no dirtier than the tank that didn't use one. Okay, it's slow moving and therefore it's not really drawing in the water like we used to do back in the late 70s where we got uh, water being pushed through under gravel filter plates at hundreds of gallons an hour which is not needed. 
because we are not trying to make mechanical filters. We're trying to make 100% biological filters, and that's it. You will also find out that when you do this, that when you clean the aquariums, you can use a gravel vacuum. You're not going to see one tank dirtier than the next. And the odds are, if you see anything at the bottom of the plenum, you'll probably see little bits of substrate that migrated maybe through the slots when you first set up the aquarium. Otherwise, you're not really going to see all kinds of mum and, and dirt and everything else at the bottom of the aquarium, which people advocate happens because they are still thinking that you're running a plenum at 100 or 200 or 450 gallons an hour. And that's just not the way it goes. So that is completely false. It's just something that people keep bringing up because they heard it from somebody that heard it from somebody that heard it from somebody. And this is the way they think it is. Plenums can run for years and years and years. They will not fill up with all kinds of dirt and detritus. They will stay clean. That's the whole point of using the plenum, is they do stay clean. They are a plenum. They may get a little bit of dirt and detritus in it, but it's not going to fill up full of dirt and detritus. You can gravel back both aquariums, you'll find out they're both just as dirty as the other one is because you're adding the same amount of filth into the aquarium through the fish and through the fish food, through the waste. Now, it's an easy experiment that anyone could do. And the results will always come out to be the same. So when people think that, oh, the underneath the plates, it's going to get all dirty and everything else, anything that's coming through that filter plate, if it's turned into mum, it's it's inert. Mum is inert. It's it's no different than if you put gravel in your aquarium. Gravel is inert. It's not going to do anything except allow bacteria to grow on it. That's it. It's inert. It's not going to take away. It's not going to add. If it's normal gravel, uh, it's not going to add or take away anything to your pH. It's not going to do anything to make your tank softer or harder. It's inert. It, it, it doesn't mean that. And test it out for yourself. Do it for a year and find out. If Look at the bottom. See if you can't see the bottom of the glass and you can actually visually look. Is one getting dirtier than the other? One thing that I noticed when I had substrate at the very bottom of aquariums uh, for example, like when I used heating cables and the heating cables failed, uh, my substrate at the bottom of the aquarium turned black because I could see right through the glass. Now, see, nobody talks about that. Why don't they show their aquariums with their substrate after about a year or something, take pictures of the very bottom of their glass? and through the substrate. And let's see what the substrate looks like. Because every aquarium I set up with the substrate at the bottom of the aquarium, within a year, that substrate was turning black because of lack of oxygen. But as you notice, nobody shows pictures of the bottom of their aquariums. So you can see through the glass what it looks like. That, like if you're using sand or anything else. The only way they can avoid that, and the only way anyone can avoid that, is if you stir it up. That's here in Florida, the public aquarium here in Florida, where they stir the substrate up three, four times a week. That's how you will avoid the blackening of your substrate. But if you leave your substrate alone, like you would a plenum, then see how black it is. You notice nobody shows you. They just keep talking and talking, but they never take pictures of their aquarium that 
they haven't disturbed the substrate on constantly to show you, even with plants, even with plant roots, you are going to see it turn black. It's always happened to me. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's get into these aquariums and I'll show you exactly what they did and read exactly how they set up their aquariums. Okay, this is a little 10 gallon aquarium of Tom's. And I'll read you what he wrote me in his email, which relates to what I just got finished talking about. Okay, it says, Hello, Kevin. I set up a tank with a under gravel filter after taking down a dirty experiment gone bad. I pulled up some sad looking plants and decided the odor was enough for me. I now have a slow moving under gravel filter, plenum, which brings me to a question. I want to leave the tube up to the surface for agitating any problems with that. Uh, substrate is safety zorb. Okay. If you decide, like he is, that you want the tube to go to the surface, the thing you have to watch out for is your amount of flow you have through it. You want it to be very slow. You don't want to get caught up into the 1970s and 80s where water was moving too fast. Remember, water doesn't need to move as fast as you think through the plenum. It could be very slow. It could be 10 gallons an hour. It could be 30 gallons an hour. Really, that's about it. You don't need any more than that. So if you want to bring the tube up to the surface, that's fine. But make sure it's running slow enough that it is not turning your plenum into a mechanical filter. That's all. And you should come up with excellent results, even if the tube is longer and if that's what you want. Just make sure it is running slow enough. That's all. You only want to aid in the exchange of water. You don't really want to move water at any fast rate of speed. You just want to aid in the exchange of water to make sure water is being exchanged through the substrate to create anoxic conditions. Okay, so this is Tom's small little 10 gallon tank. Looks very nice. And we'll go on to the other tank, but I thought I would answer that question. And as you notice, he does mention that uh, he had a dirted tank and it went bad and it smelled terrible. Okay, why do you think it smelled ter terrible? Okay, this is a substrate and everything. Everything's here. Axolotl. This is for an axolotl tank. And, um, gosh, I haven't seen an axolotl in years. I'm being honest with you. I just don't see pet stores selling them anymore. Uh, one reason is they sold them a long time ago, and they were they have a requirement of food. Aquarium needs, um, plus their gills can get damaged because they're exposed. So she has a challenge of trying to keep these salamanders in her aquarium. I see that she has the kitty litter. She's got potting soil, but she also has black sand. And she's going to make an axolotl aquarium. And I'm going to get into it to show you how she did it. Okay, I'll uh, read to you what she said. Um, all right, so I have an axolotl. And uh, they have unique water parameters and the substrate needs. First, I refinished the tank stand, which made me too eager to wait for the best solution. So she she took this, uh, it looks like oak. And she painted it over, you know, to her taste, which is fine. Make it the way you want. I've had success with planted tanks capped with gravel. 
<clears throat> I can't send pictures of the beautiful previous setups if you'd like. The problem this goes around was the sand, I'm guessing. Because of the hot mess I was dealing with, I had to reset the tank and try again. This time around, I removed the sponge filter and added a plenum with the landscaping fabric. Uh, let's see. I purchased after my trays. We cut. Okay, she purchased trays. She cuts them to fit the aquarium. I guess this aquarium looks like a 75 gallon, I'm assuming. I wrapped and tucked the fiber on both cloths and cut the small hole in the top right hand corner for the inflow. So she put fiber over the filter plates. I topped, I topped it off with soil, kitty litter, and gravel mix. Next layer was sand with gravel. After this layer, I planted my tank to help with depth in the water and finally added a final cap of sand. Okay, she states, my fingers are currently crossed. I'm slightly concerned a bit with all the tiny air bubbles at the top of the substrate. That didn't happen last time. <clears throat> Am, uh, let's see, is my air full too strong, do you think? It's only been a few hours so far. Okay. She's using that black sand. Now, that, if anyone remembers some of my older videos where I had black sand at the bottom of the antique aquarium. If you remember that, that it had a lot of air bubbles for quite some time. And you actually, I actually had to go in there and with a stick or something and move it around. But after even two months, three months, I still had air bubbles trapped in that sand. It's the same sand she's using. In fact, uh, I think that's the same sand you get from PetSmart or Petco. It's a brand, and uh, I had the same problem. But like she states, this is a brand new aquarium. It's newly set up, as we can see by the air bubbles. That happens. That will finally go away. A lot of times I'll just take my hand and rub it on the sides of the glass and for the air bubbles. And if the air bubbles don't seem to want to leave the top of the sand, uh, you may have to mix it up a little bit or put your hand in there. Yes, I see. It looks like tons of air bubbles, but uh, that should, now since you're using a plenum, that should help get rid of the air bubbles that are trapped in that sand itself. When I use that sand and just place it at the bottom of the aquarium, no, the bubbles never left. Even months later, those bubbles were still there. So it, I think it's the sand itself. It's a very fine black sand. And I recognize the bag. So, yeah, that will dissipate after a while. If you if you put fish in there, quarries or something, or she's going to put her salamander in there, most likely that is going to walk on the bottom and break the bubbles off the top. So nothing to worry about. But anyhow, this is her aquarium. Um, I hope she has good luck with it. She says she has her fingers crossed. I hope you enjoyed her pictures of her aquarium that uh, she did and I'm looking forward to seeing the tank when uh, it's aged some as she said it is brand new and she did paint the stand though but uh, it doesn't look bad it doesn't look bad at all so that's it for this video. I want to thank the people who sent me their pictures of their aquariums. And I hope uh, everybody enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Enjoy and don't forget to subscribe and happy fish keeping.